So just one week before the exams start, we don't want to screw up our IGCSEs, and I'm going to go through the method for the last week to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, this flies in the face of a lot of traditional advice, including advice on my own channel, and the reason for that is you have one week left, just one week, and that changes a lot how you approach your revision in this particular time. Now, whether you've done loads of revision up to this point or you've done absolutely nothing at all, there's no judgment at this point. You all have one week left regardless, so you should all be following this advice. Number one is past papers. Again, you probably knew I was going to say this, but at this point, you are focusing on yearly past papers and you start with the most up to date, so 2023, and then you work your way backwards. The reason for that, if you pick out a paper from 2017 and it's got matrices in on the IGCSE course, that has been taken off. Or if you're doing 0607 and there's a histogram question, that has been taken off the syllabus. So the more up to date the past paper is, the more likely it's going to be in the same style as the 2024 paper. Now, how many past papers should you be doing? I get asked this question all the time. You need to do as many as possible. Again, that's the best advice here. Again, think about all your different subjects, so not just maths here, but science and English and everything else, and making sure that you're doing as many as possible. If you're already on a grade A, grade nine, or A star at English, for example, you should be spending more time on those subjects you're not doing so well in. So past papers, you need to be doing as many as possible. Number two, which a lot of students simply don't consider, and this is really irritating to me because my YouTube channel has been based on doing this, and that is predicting the questions. Now you're thinking, how can I predict exactly what's going to appear on the page? Well, there are topics that appear very, very frequently. And if you check out the video above, I go through that for 0580 maths, 0607 maths, A-level maths, paper one, and 0606 Add maths. Again, I'll pop all those videos in the description. But just to summarize, uh, probability, for example, is going to appear on paper two and probably paper four as well. It's going to appear at least once uh, on one paper, could appear on both papers. You should be knowing that information, which topics you should focus on. If we take something, for example, indices, that is going to come up regularly, but it's usually a small question. Whereas if you've revised statistics, that's usually a massive question on paper four. So you should be using my predictions to then think about which topics to revise first. And if you work from the green, the almost certain or certain category, down to your sometimes, you're prioritizing the best revision possible. Now, number three is kind of following to this with the predicted questions, and that is the mark scheme. I am flabbergasted how many students do not know about the mark schemes and how they are judged for what they write. So for example, if you've got a three sides of a triangle and you're working an angle, you can use the cosine rule for that. By just writing out one calculation with all the information there, you can gain three method marks just for writing it. Rather than wasting all this time writing loads of working, you need to be efficient in the exam, getting the ma maximum amount of marks for the minimum of effort, okay? And that is the way that you use the mark scheme effectively. Now, you're probably thinking at this point, if I'm working at this pace with yearly past papers and predictions and everything else, surely at some point I'm going to end up burnt out. And to be honest, this is a very short term way of thinking to revise for the exams for this particular one week. And you probably will feel burnt out by the end of this process. So it's really important when we get to the end of exams is to take a long extended break. If you need the entire summer just to recover from the exams, whether you're doing IGCSE or A-level, then that's what you need to do. But this is a short term solution. You need to be aware of this and that's going to get you the very best grades. Now, on to my last point here, which is social media. Again, social media is all around us. Again, at our phones, we've got our TikTok, we've got Instagram, YouTube, everything else. My one very, very big piece of advice here is switch off TikTok. Switch off Instagram. Switch off those social media channels. Get that phone and put it in the cupboard where it belongs. The only time you should be using 
online resources is things like YouTube, which are actually going to help you revise for the exams. That doom scrolling of going through Instagram, that doom scrolling of going through TikTok is simply going to waste time. I know there's been a lot of information packed into this video. So all the links, everything I've mentioned, I've popped down in the description if you want to go through anything I've done. But make sure you've got past papers, those yearly past papers, use the predictions, focus your revision, and know what the mark scheme expects. Okay, and if you want to catch up on all things IGCSE, get a feeling for where you are at the moment, and check out the video right over here, because I spend two hours going through those top 10 topics that I have predicted.